What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. You're listening to Lyles Movie Files. Little brother Jace, how are you? Doing good, bro. Just hoping we don't get some uh, torrential flood over here. But other than that, doing good. How are you? I'm good. I've got a big umbrella all set. Jay King, what's up with you, man? Hey, man, I'm cooling, man. Chief, what's going on with you? Everything is good. Everything is good. Uh Let's get right into it. Game of Thrones had maybe its most controversial episode of the last two or three years. People were up in arms over the super extended episode, not in any way they wanted. And there was a Starbucks cup and a big scene, and everybody lost their minds. So, fellas, that's my take on it real fast. I want to hear what y'all think about this episode before I go all into my take on it. Uh, Jason, let's start with you. Okay. Uh, we could see big improvement over last week. Uh, I did not see the Starbucks coffee uh, until it was pointed out, but I did thought that was kind of funny. Uh, the episode, it really, it, it was one of those, I don't know why they felt the need, even because even if your film is one long season, that really seemed like it just because of the tone shift, it should have just been two episodes because it was like, Hey, we're celebrating winning against the White Walkers. And that would have been like the nice cool down episode. And even if you said, oh, that not, not that much happened in that episode, it's still kind of, oh, you know, you saw Jamie and Brienne get together. Oh, that's that's cute. Uh, Arya says, I ain't got time to play housemaid. That was funny. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 and, then, and then two seconds later, it's just, you know, no travel time. You're, you're all, they're already from, uh, Winterfell to King's Landing and uh, just a time jump. I really wish I could travel with whatever the heck they were using today. Using on that last... I wish people would understand that. They're just tapping into the portals and they're going through. They're using I... Cisco's portals to get from places. Man, I, I mean, I need to holler at Cisco, man. He, he, he's, I mean, he's, he's very uh, free with those things on Flash, so I really wish I could get one. I think I'd really be good with it. Uh Getting the dragon dying in like two seconds, I was like, wait, is this a dream? Because we just jumped from one thing to the next. And this was going to be Danny's way of knowing not to rush into it since all of her advisors say, hey, slow down. And Sansa's like, uh, you're losing people because you're rushing them in from one word to the next. How about you chill out for a little bit? You know, maybe once everybody's kind of, you know, bury their dead, they might be more willing to fight. But she didn't do that. It wasn't a dream. Uh, and then she ended up losing another dragon, most and all of her fleet, pretty much. I, I don't know if that was perfectly said. They just all magically appeared. That didn't that didn't make a lot of sense to me. But and then she she loses her best her, her, her advisor. So uh, I, I think she's going to become Mad Queen all in two seconds, and then it'll pave the way for Jon Snow to be king for like five minutes before somebody kills him, and then. You know, I, I think Varys becomes king. So, it's like, it, it, it is very, it was a very interesting episode. It was very emotional. But, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see where these next two take us. All right. Chief, what did you think about this one? Uh, it was a good episode. It was, uh, a lot going on in that room. Um, you could see, you can see the jealousy she had when uh, they were loving uh, they were loving my man there. Um, Thanks, so, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like we all knew, Sansa was going to. She couldn't hold that secret. Um, I mean, hell, I don't think it was. I don't think it was told. What six hours before she let it out. Um, did she, did she wait that long? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was, it was just like, uh, yeah, I'm such and such. She was like, uh, let me get a word with you. So, you got like the first person she saw, like, hey, I know I swore. I don't think right. that was an accident, and she could have told a lot of people, but she chose Terry, and I really don't think that was some. Oh, I can't wait to share this news. By the way, did you no, know it wasn't my cousin? No. Yeah, if she saw it was little finger. I mean, not little I'm finger. I'm not saying it was an accident. I'm saying that, like, she she swore to help. She swore to keep the secret. Did she? And 
Uh, yeah. I, I mean, thought that she really was like, hey, John, how am I going to swear to something if I don't know what it is? Yeah. I, I kind of admit at the end. Yeah. Then at the end, she was like, all right, I swear. Yeah, she okay. did. I'm just kind of okay. like, I'm with her because, you know, I swear uh, off of the secret that I don't know about. This new secret, uh, I don't know about. So, um, so you got her being jealous of John. Uh, I, you know, she had that talk with the hound. And, uh. Oh, wait, you thought Sans is jealous of John. No, no. I'm talking about Daenerys was jealous of Sansa. Oh, okay, then okay. I, I'm jumping back to Sansa. Okay, saying. Sansa you. had All to right. talk with the Hound. Uh, just, the, just the other conversations were going on in the room. Um, Jamie and, and Brienne finally got together, but then he he rolls out on her. Um, you know, uh, John, John just and I put in the same position, man. If I didn't want the throne, I, I probably would have shut up about it. To be honest with you. I wouldn't have told anyone. I mean, that's a, like, if you really don't want something, and that's the thing, if you really don't want something, that's a secret you don't want to get out. It's not about, quote, unquote, telling family so they're in the loop. I think some certain things that you have to shut up about, you know what I mean? Like, you know that you can't go and tell your some of your family members certain things, whether you be judged, whether, you know, Aunt Sadie's going to put it out to the rest of the family. You just, whatever the case may be, you know that, you know your family members and you know what you got to keep quiet from them. Um, Sadie, you are appreciated. Cersei, Cersei is a ruthless, I mean, her ruthlessness is just, uh, I love her. <laughs> um I do, man. Uh, she's just she's just pure ruthlessness. And then, so answer me this. I show up in a neighborhood. Say me and my boy step out of five Suburbans, right? And we come to a neighborhood, and say the neighborhood, for argument's sake, is six blocks long, six blocks deep. So all the people in the neighborhood are out there, and I've got five, six Suburban, six times six. I got 36 guys with me, including myself. So I'm with 36 D. The neighborhood has 700 people in it. Mm-hmm. Why the hell did she just destroy old girl right there? I mean... First of all, they had the high ground, right? We all know what happens when you have the high ground. If we haven't learned anything from, from Star, the Star Wars series. So it looked like she had the littlest army out there. There was no dragon flying about. Don't just chop off the head. Kill them all out there. They're all standing out there. And they, you can see they were depleted. You, like, I was just like, oh, she's going to let them walk away? I figured she just put an arrow in her. I didn't, you know, I, I, to go to war, I didn't understand that talk, especially her. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't just attack them and kill them there. I um, think they actually did have a bigger army, even with the Golden Company. I think they actually had more people. It would have just been a bloody war if she just did. I mean, if she had just attacked well, them, I think she would, she knew she would lose, but she needed Daenerys to do something stupid, which she probably heard from all of her advisors. She's impetuous, so. They probably just like give her a reason to do something stupid and she'll she'll fall, you know, the next round. Really? Does Cersei need a reason? I mean, they're standing there. You saw the picture. I didn't see anybody else in there. I saw a depleted army. It looked like a hundred dudes out there. <laughs> That's what it looked like. It looked mm-hmm. like her talking to talking with a hundred dudes. She could have shot an arrow directly into her chest and ended the war right there. I was just like, why hasn't that, you know, why hasn't that happened? I, I was expecting her half really to shoot her at that point. I'm like, okay, you're standing out there. Everybody's looking down on you. Why haven't they crushing you? Um, I was sad to see Miss Cindy go, but you knew her and Grey Worm wasn't going to live on no damn island uh, and soaking up the sun uh, for the rest of their lives. Uh, the uh, treason, uh, the treasonous talk, was uh 
was a curious point. I wonder how far that's going to go. Um, will will uh, Kyrian eventually uh, betray her? Um, and uh, these boat guys, I think uh, Jeff and I were talking earlier in the week. So you got your dragons. You see the boats coming from six, seven miles away. I mean, you're up high enough. You can see the boats coming into view. They know you know they're not your boat. So I don't understand how the hell you're that low where uh, one of those big-ass arrows they shoot can kill your dragon. And not just kill your dragon, but, I mean, pinpoint kill your dragon. Like, the first joint, that, that joint was on target. Like, the first two hit, like, the same spot and then one right through the neck. So you're that close and you didn't see the boat? Ah. And then you go, I thought she was going to be some, do some big thing when she dove down or something and, and she just flew off. So, I, you know, I mean, next week is next week. I'm, 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 I'm curious to see what happens. But there's a lot of things happening this week, even though a lot of things didn't happen. It was just like, you know, just a whole bunch of uh, plot setups that I think were going on um, that should play out in these next two weeks to the fullest. Uh, these next two episodes, just an hour and a half both, or they did they up them to two hours the last two? No, I think they're an hour and a half. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's my take on it, because Javon, I know you haven't caught it yet. This was the first episode this season where it felt like, yeah, we got to hurry up and wrap this season up, fellas. We got to throw all this in this one episode. And I thought it was interesting, because like Jay said, it was a drastic shift in episodes where it's like, yes, we beat the White Walkers. We've done the thing. And then it's like, hey, anybody want to catch your breath? You want to sleep over for the night? Then we got to go off and, and do War Part 2. So I thought that was a little weird. And I think that in previous seasons, like if they had maybe started this last season, we would have seen like the whole company rolling down and getting the ships and getting ready to go fight Cersei over like two or three episodes. And I felt like this is probably the first time where that that fast pass travel system they've set up over the last two years didn't work in its favor. There wasn't that like fellowship of the ring, hey, we're on the march, we're doing our thing, where they could have had some of these quiet moments that we've seen before and helped develop their characters. I think it definitely would have helped with Tyrion and Varys as they start going, hey, did you notice Daenerys is starting to act a little weird? Um, so yeah, there was that. And John pieced out to ghosts. I thought that was kind of weird because he was so far away he didn't even give him a pack goodbye. And the directors apparently were like, we don't have the CGI to handle him saying goodbye to his dog. But somebody on Twitter pointed out that the week before, uh, Leanna took an icicle or a sword and killed a giant. So I don't know what's going on with that. That was really weird. I was not one of the cool kids who noticed the Starbucks cup. I was too busy seeing the green in Daenerys' eyes. So I totally missed that. Um, I thought Tormund was really funny with his whole trying to use his lines on Brienne. She was like, sorry, dude, I'm good. And I thought that moment with Jamie and her was really well earned. That was something they'd been working on and setting up for was it four seasons at that point? So that was cool. Uh, let's see. I am totally, I don't understand who's putting together Daenerys' military strategy because I feel like they should have been fired, killed, or whatever. Um, this is the second war, I mean, big battle, and, and her whole crew seems totally unprepared. You've got this, I mean, they know that you're on fleet in the ocean. They, they've got that scouting report. So instead of, hey, let's let's go around where he is and have the dragons attack him on both sides because he's got boats. He can't pivot that fast. So that was really weird. I didn't understand why Daenerys didn't just come back around, you, you know, use her special Dracarys and wipe out Euron's fleet right then and there, especially when he started taking aim at the other boats, at her fleet. Like, I understand... Okay, I got to be a little risky here, but 
the second he started aiming at her crew, it was like, what are you doing? You need to get in there. And instead, he just wiped out the whole group. And that was really a puzzling, baffling strategy, especially when she likes to burn people. So I just didn't get that. And Cersei, I'm really with Chief. I mean, I don't understand the purpose of not just, I'll kill her right now, and that's a wrap. It's done. Who cares about these other people? They don't have a leader, and I can win, and everybody can go home. There's no one who can control these dragons, and I'm good. I've got a crossbow, scorpion bolt that will take that last dragon out, and I'm good. So it was, it was really weird. It felt like that TV moment where we got to save the big fight for next week. And I also thought it was weird that Missandei was like the one person who got kidnapped and then lost her head because Cersei wanted to prove that, hey, I am a monster. And yeah, lots, lots of stuff. And you know Daenerys is going to lose her mind and like use her dragon to roast everybody. But I feel like if she had done that a little earlier this episode, it wouldn't have gotten to that point. So now I want to talk about Twitter and everybody's response on this. Well, not everybody, but, you know, it's like the general temperature of Twitter, which is always a, a desperate and dire, foolish rabbit hole to get into. But I did it because I'm crazy. So a lot of people were not happy about this. And lots of people were going, once again, Game of Thrones does not respect its POC. And the one POC couple loses, you know, they, they get broken up because somebody got killed. And uh, what else did they say? They were just like, hey, that's terrible. And now Brianne's sitting up here crying over this guy. And he's left because of some terrible character development. And what a travesty to treat the woman like that. And fans can't say that being raped made her better. That's terrible. No woman is better from being raped. Um, lots of things. And so many people were upset. And I just didn't understand why so many people were upset. Everything that I mentioned has been very consistent from season one of Game of Thrones. Women have not been treated any worse, any better than the dudes on the show. See example of Theon Greyjoy who literally lost little 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 joy. Um and that was terrible. Like that was a serious major offense that got happened to him. Like he got humiliated and lost his most important part. And that was something that nobody was like, oh man, it was so terrible. I can't believe they did that. It was just like, oh you know, God, he deserves that. Um the show has never been been about, you know, people of color. It's been about other people. And the people of color on the show have not necessarily been set up to be important pivotal characters. That's been the case since season one. Uh, the women have always been treated like trash. Uh, Roz got killed with a crossbow because Joffrey was bored one day. And they were, I mean, and geez, Tyrion strangled out his, his girl because she was sleeping with his dad. I mean, we've seen some pretty crummy stuff. But if you've been watching Game of Thrones for seven and a half seasons now, what's the surprise? And why now have we come to this point of serious outrage and indignation? Can y'all help me out with this? No. It's the climate of the culture. <laughs> it's, we, it's outrage central, baby. Everything triggers everybody, man. I mean, it's like watching The Walking Dead and being surprised that Oh my God! There's gonna be a death at the mid-season finale. You mean these are zombies? It's like, come on, man! How long have you been watching this? Seriously, just pull your head out of your ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like, you know, Daenerys is making powerful moves, and now she's got a mad queen. She's always been that. I mean, it's like, like you, I mean, like that her whole art. That's that's where they've been setting this up. Like, there are a lot of things where you could go, oh, I can see where they took a little detour based off of what Martin had planned. But I feel like if you watched her steps, she's always been like this. But she's proclaimed herself this savior of people of color and who worship her and her totally perfect blonde hair. That's been her thing since this show. I mean, basically since season two. 
yeah. she escaped from the fire with the dragon eggs and was like, yeah. And everybody who was brown was bowing down before. No one complained about that. And now it's like, well, wait a second. Her one POC girl, her buddy, got killed and it's just supposed to motivate Daenerys? And I'm like, but Daenerys has lost tons of people. I mean, are we at the point where people of color are supposed to be bulletproof and in a bubble wrap because we can't get killed off? I mean, well, the people of color were the uh, front lines for basically all of her wars. All like, of her wars. I mean, like, so want- let's, 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 let's start, let's start, like, and every, everything she's basically said, like, I mean, like, if, like I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. It's like when she killed uh, the colleagues. It's like, did y'all not see that was an indication? It's like she's not playing by what everybody else thinks of the rules. She's like, she thinks she's destined for this. It's like, why do you think anybody, anyone who says destiny's on their side, is always a little bit crazy? Like, if you've ever heard a politician or anybody say, "It is my destiny to save you," <laughs> ding, 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 <laughs> they're crazy. So it's not, if you just you pick this up after somebody told you to binge watch it and say it's a great series, it's like if you were doing any analytical using any analytical skills, you saw where she was going. Like just like you see John, oh wow, he's been since his time when you couldn't stand him, then he starts to being a little cooler, then a little cooler. Wow, this son, he can really run this joint. Oh wow, he might actually run the joint. You don't. It's like if you look, every one of these characters has developed exactly how. They, I mean, nobody's story arc is completely 180. Everybody's arc, basically to, been an evolution point, of who they are. To your point, when when Jinri proposed to Ara, Ara, I was like, dude, are you crazy? Ara is a, is a G. She's not settling down for you to be some lady of the house. She is a straight-up warrior. There's no way she would do that. And when she did that, everybody was like, yeah. But it's like that was consistent with everything we've seen. That was season one arc. She's like when her dad said, "Hey, you're not a lady, but I can trust you to train with this sword, dude, because that's probably more like what you are." Like it's nobody has been 180. If you just paid attention, it was just like, "Oh, that's oh, it happens." Like and Sans is like, "Yeah, she's gotten a little tougher." It's like I'm not willing to jump on that one thing, but it's like everything else. It's like she's been, she went from this like small little diminutive princess, somebody take care of me, I need to have these fancy things, to she's like, I learned how to play, I learned how to play this game by a little thing. I'm pretty damn good at it. Like, so you can't, you can't, act, like, like Javon said, like you can't get all in, indignant that how you want, I mean, you, some of y'all have been on Team Daenerys the whole time. It's like y'all didn't actually pay attention to who she was. We've been saying this basically since the show out. It's like she's a little off, and y'all just like no, no, no. She's like she's got dragons. She's mother of dragons, keeper of wind. Blah blah blah. It's like break. Yeah, it's like when anybody comes up with that many damn names for themselves, think about it. You've heard it in politics, and you're always like, hmm, they're a little off. Ding ding ding. Yeah. So I, I'm very kind of surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but people are acting like Grey Worm and the Sand are supposed to go off to the sunset and be happy. But from episode 9 of season 1, we knew happy endings were not what this show dealt in. The show dealt with, you know, more or less reality. Everybody doesn't get a happy ending. Sometimes crappy stuff happens to good people. And sometimes the good people or the bad people have great things happen for them. So that's kind of been how the show's been all along. And, you know, the outrage over Daenerys being portrayed like this villain now, I'm like, yeah, uh, from my perspective, I've always saw Daenerys as this person who was just like, yep, I've got it, who had basically everything handed to her, including those dragon eggs, which she just nurtured and took care of. And you know, use that to kind of run her army. And so her whole deal now of like, oh no, she's being the mad queen. I feel like if we've been paying attention, those that's been foreshadowed for so long. Maybe they're rushing it at the end point, but that's kind of where she's been so long since the show's been underway. 
Chief, what do you think about that, man? Um, well, I mean, to some degree, she's always done what she wanted to do. I mean, she she was, what did she want? She wanted everybody to bend the knee, and she wanted control of the uh, the kingdom. Everything else, man, she really didn't really give a damn about. Um, you know, she's been burning people who didn't want to follow her. I mean, she's, she, in a way, she's a less blatantly evil Cersei. She's never um, taken advice. It's like, it's, I mean, she's had how many advisors tell her what to do? And she's like, meh, I'm going to do my own thing. So she, she, I mean, she'll, she'll go through, she'll burn up, you know, she, she, she's killed a rack of people herself. Just never uh, in a spectacular fashion. I think that's why we don't put her right up there with, with Cersei and her killings. I mean, but she's killed villages. She's wiped out villages of people. I mean, she's she's done her killing in this time. I mean, like I said, um, she just hasn't. It just hasn't been that devious. Spect- She'll just be like, "I'm gonna kill you all," and then they, you know, and that's how they go about it. Um. I think last week's episode, I think she was, I think the reason why she struck the move so quickly, to be honest with you, is not because just because she wanted, I think she was in her feelings about everything. And I think, I think she, I think she was letting her emotions carry her through instead of taking the time to sit back. She was she was an emotional person last week. Um the whole the whole episode was just her on this emotional uh skyrocket type thing. I mean she was on her Anakin she was going, going crazy. Yeah, she was she was going through it with John, which pretty much she started acting a fool. From that point on, she was like, yeah, we're going to go see this. We're going to do this. I think she wants to She wants to be put in power before people, more people find out about John. I think once she figures she's in place, it'll be harder to take her out. But the, the for her to wait, she realizes that at that point in time, it would be harder because more people would know about him. So when you're trying to rush something, you know what I mean? Because you don't want people to to find out about certain things, you do certain things. And I think that was her problem last week. I don't think it was necessarily her just wanting to rush out there and, and, and defeat Thirsty. I think she wanted to get ahead of this. John has the right to the throne thing. And once she sits upon the throne and Everything is, you know what I mean? She's there and everything she commands is hers. It would be harder for this whole John thing to take over. I mean, if you look at it in that context, you would probably try to rush everything too. You know what I mean? I mean, you're trying to get things done in a hurry because you know that there's an outcome that you don't want to have it already in place. I'm pretty sure she knows that that word is out. And the minute, the longer she takes to do what she needs to do, the more people will try to follow John instead of her. And I think that's that's where her rush is coming from. Mm-hmm. So what do you think is going to happen with this fight with Danny's side and Cersei's side? How many people, how many big names do you think we're going to lose this coming Sunday? I, You know, the crazy thing about this whole thing is I don't even know how you fight without fighters. So there's, what, 20,000 men waiting there? And her lot. army was big. Her army was bigger than uh, uh, Cersei's armor was bigger than theirs before they fought the walkers. And then they said that they're down to half of what they had before the walkers came through. So I'm just trying to figure out, I, I, I don't know. Like, 
you're down to one dragon. I, I assume that uh, 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 Theon, Theon, Theon's sister is going to show up at some point. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that she'll come through with with the boats or whatever at some point. Right. But uh, maybe maybe some people. Uh, I don't know how many she's going to bring. Not enough. But I mean, how do you win this? How do you win this war? You know, what are you going? I mean, I, I don't. You know, the bombs haven't been haven't been invented. So it's not like you can take the dragon sky high and just drop drop from above. So I don't know. You know, I mean, really, I think they should all just maybe perhaps. Go into a Starbucks and talk it out. <laughs> we know they've got Starbucks and Westeros, so it's all good. Yeah. Chase, what do you so, want? You know, and, oh, my God, and it went fell. <laughs> right, 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 right. All right, Jace, how about you? Jace, what do you want to see? <laughs> all right, for next week, I kind of want to see somebody do something unexpected. I mean, because as much as I say everybody's been kind of on the same journey they started, I would actually like, I mean, I don't know who could do it because the quiet assassin has one name on her list that she has not made peace with and her chances of sneaking back into Queen's Landing, I mean, King's Landing, is probably zero. So she probably would kill Cersei before the mountain even knows anything's happening. But I, I want to see somebody else do some, just some weird tail power move I mean, somehow either take out John and uh, Daenerys after the dragon is dead and just claims it for himself. Like, hey, just Jinry decide he wants to be king. Like, that would just be something bonkers to me that I would actually be like, you know what? That was unexpected. So I'd actually be cool saying that. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. So with all this outrage going on about Game of Thrones, I wanted to ask you guys, what was the last show that you just had to rage quit where you couldn't take it anymore? It just got to the point of this show's ridiculous. I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to stop watching it. Javon, we haven't heard from you in a second. So let's start this off with you. Oh, wow. It's, it's been a couple. Um, and I'm, you know me, I, I like to, con- I, 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 all things in consideration for me. So I watch shows that most people will stay away from, like, uh, let's say, Lethal Weapon. <laughs> that was one that recently I had to rage quit because as corny and, and, and silly as it was, um, I liked kind of where they were going with it its first season. By the second season, they upped the ridiculousness and then all the things that were happening off camera kind of turn me off of it because it's like, dude, this show isn't that good to begin with. <laughs> no, nobody needs to have too much ego about where they stand on. It's like, it's not like uh, you got the biggest show on television here. This is not the eighties and your, your Philip Michael Thomas and uh, uh, Don Johnson. Nobody's making an album from, from the success of this show. Like just do this stupid little weekly for 20 episodes <laughs> and, and fall back. But Everything kind of fell to pieces last season, and um, I just I jumped ship. I jumped ship first episode, and I thought Stifler was gonna do a good job as uh, what's his face, the uh, Mer- uh, um, Riggs replacement, but nah, dude, it was terrible. So that was that was definitely one. Um, God, uh, I'm trying to think. There's there's other shows, but. I'll keep it right there to get the guys. I can go on and on and on. I'll give the guys an opportunity to let, let you know there is, but that's my most recent one. All right. Chief, how about you? Uh, <clears throat> I never watched the, uh, the, I guess, the third installment of Daredevil. So they started canceling, you know, Luke, Iron Fist, Jessica, and then, like, right around that time, Daredevil was coming out. And I was like, why even bother? Like, why bother? You know? Um, it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I'm not even going to get into this show just to have them cancel it. 
as soon as I finish. Um, so that, and I think uh, I Zombie. <clears throat> like I had watched it when it first came out. I think I, and somewhere in there, I was just like, eh, what the hell is going on in here? It started. They started to do too much. I just, it was something about it. And then now I see that this is the final season that they're running now. Like even I guess people were like, mm, yeah, you're doing too much. And uh, so those are those are those are my two. I guess I just you know I, you, after a while I just like ah, I can't do it no more. And you stop. All right, Jace, what you got? Okay. Oh. Uh, uh. I'm 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 going to be very careful here because I I got two easy ones, but I, I think I'm going to I'm going to stick with my safe one to literally let you have the other one. Okay. All right. My rage quit was Heroes. It was like I I I I mean honestly, I was good. I'm like even when they dropped the ball with the whole Nathan Petrelli is the president thing. And then all of a sudden, they decided to, I think it was probably three episodes in season four, they decided to kill off Nathan. And I'm like, okay, that's stupid. And then we decided to go to some, uh, gosh, what was it? Some funny farm? Uh, the Carnival. Carnival, yeah. Carnival is like, yeah, y'all look like y'all didn't have a direction on where this was going before. And now you 100% show me that this is not going to be worth my time. So I jump ship. And then like when was it? Siler started befriending uh, Claire. I was like, I mean, the guy just cut your head off. You're cool with that. This is getting ridiculous. Like the whole super villain psycho killer redemption for no damn reason. I was like, yeah, I'm out. So, I mean, I ended up watching the new one, but. That was also because they didn't keep any of that other crap from season four, which was like, okay, I can tolerate this, but yeah, that, that was my that was one of my last rage quits. All right, I have forgot I needed to go back, Chief. You absolutely need to watch that third season of Daredevil. It was probably my favorite of all of the Netflix shows on Marvel, the Marvel Netflix shows. It's great. And we know they're canceling everything, but give that one a watch, man. It's well worth checking out. Mine is a recent one, uh, maybe even as of this year. I had to rage quit Legends of Tomorrow. I had been sticking with this show pretty tough after the first season. The second season was good, even though they really didn't do anything with the Justice Society which was a really cool tease in the first season cliffhanger. And I was so like, oh, cool, we're going to see the Justice Society. And they didn't do anything with them outside of kill them off really quick or just do dumb stuff. And it was, it was so lame. But um, I kept sticking with it. And, and it was starting to get a little weird. And, and they were going a little too hard on the ha-ha, oh, this is so funny. And we were getting episodes where they weren't even in costume at all. And I didn't like that because I was like, the whole point of the show is it's a superhero ensemble. And now these jokers can't even be bothered to be in costume. And so this season, they introduced Constantine. They put him onto the show with the team. And that was fun for the first half of the season. And I was kind of with them. And then they took their break. And I had kind of missed a couple episodes before the break. So I decided I'd jump right back into it when they started again. And. I mean, like the first 10 minutes, they had like a werewolf. They had a puppet going off like he was in, a puppet was strapped up into this gurney like he was so dangerous. And they had Gary, who was just the most idiotic dude on any of the Arrowverse shows. He's running around because he has more screen time. And he's just being so silly. And I just was like, why am I still watching this show? They don't have any smart dudes on the show at all. They're like corny losers. And I didn't want to see that happen to Constantine, so I stopped watching. Um, and then they got rid of all the black dudes. And 
it just wasn't good anymore to me. And I was just, I don't have enough time to watch a show that I don't enjoy watching. And I just felt like there's too much good TV on with all the stuff on Netflix. There are other good shows on network TV that are well worth my time. I still haven't watched Supernatural. So I need to stop watching stuff that I hate. And Arrow would be very close <laughs> to that list. It would, I would have rage quit Arrow this season if they didn't announce that it was going to be done after next season's eight episodes. Because I've, I've gotten to a point where the show is so stupid, they, don't even, they can't even bother to have the title character on episodes for most of the time. They've come up with the future side plot that doesn't even feature him at all. And I don't know if he's dead or what. I don't care. But he's not there. Like on a 44-minute episode, Stephen Amell is like there for 13 minutes now. And it's like, you know what? I didn't sign on for this show. And I'm always behind. Like, I don't even stay up with it hard to do the recaps anymore. I'm just like, ah, I'll get to it when I get to it. And that's a sign that I really should have stopped watching. But I'm only just like, ah, I've, I've gone this far with it. I'll just keep going because the finish line is in sight. It's uh, nine more episodes, and then I'm done with Arrow. And I will happily be done with Arrow because it's just jump the shark, the fence, the moon, whatever it takes to make a show bad, that's what it's done in this season. So, sure. yeah. Honestly, I don't think Stephen Amell is in this episode. I mean, this season, 13 minutes. I think other than the, after the prison thing, I think he's probably in this thing maybe, you know, 10 minutes most. I mean, it's just like, all right, we got to go to this wacky future of ridiculous mm-hmm. And then we have to go and then try and like justify why Amico matters. Then we got to go try and find some reason to put Felicity in 90% of the show. Oh yeah. And Stephen Mel can come on, but yeah. yeah. And, and Amico has been a terrible villain and it's like all she is, I don't, she's just a terrible villain. Like a lot of people were like, ah, eh, Diaz isn't that good. But compared to Amico, Diaz had so much more going for her. He even though his stupid, hey, I want to be part of this circle, and now I'm going to kill them all, just so but, I can hang out with the Longbow Hunters. It's like, but at least Diaz was introduced the first week. I mean, like, kind of is this part of this cabal of villains with Caden James in, like, the first two episodes of the season? And as a bad guy, I mean, he wasn't great, but it's like Amico, the dark turn of Amico. Like you, you said, like, earlier this week, it's like, we did the whole bad stepsister thing with Fia and with Malcolm Merlin, but then you decided to water it. so much better. Yeah. It's just like, you just watered it down and then you're going to make, Oh, it was such, it was all a plot to get Oliver to trust her. She didn't need to need to, she could have killed. She could have done all this from the shadows. There's absolutely nothing reputation that matters. It's just kind of like, Oh, we got to tie her to Oliver some way. She has no vendetta with Oliver because she was hanging out at their father's grave site. Like, hey, dad, sorry I missed you. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, she's a bad guy. I've always hated my father. That's why I've been hanging out at his grave site to talk for no reason because I'm jealous of you. This is stupid. It's just driving me nuts talking more about this show and how stupid it is. And then, hey, if you're really invested in this show, you don't need to bother because in the future, everything goes to crap. Oh, yeah. Hey. Car- what's his name? Renee's an idiot mayor. Uh, something Diggle. I don't know if he spawned a second kid or whatever. Uh, Felicity. We must, instead of worrying about Arrow, we must find Felicity. She's the answer to everything. It was like, come on, guys. Like, at least humor me that we care about Oliver in the show anymore. And I, I mean, dare you to find an episode this season where. At least one time, Felicity does not get propped up because, and someone tells her how awesome she is. Not it. Yeah. So, Gunner, welcome to the show, man. We've been talking about shows that have made us rage quit. You got any suggestions for us? You were just finishing up with the one that uh, I'd totally be done with because I'm like, wow, this is nice to know that they haven't fixed it. So, okay. So everything's the same because I haven't watched any CW show because this since maybe the break because I'm just I'm exhausted 
you know, I'll catch up on Flash once, you know, CW app and everywhere else puts all the episodes on so I don't miss anything because I don't want their, you know, their select episodes that they just throw up there and then take them down. I'm just like, I'll just wait till they're on Netflix and just watch all the Flash. But Arrow, Arrow, dare I say, it's starting to be on my Legends of Tomorrow side of the house where it's like, I'm not watching it. I just I don't want to watch this season. The season seems super pointless. Unless someone on this podcast tells me that I need to watch that show towards like the last two episodes, Not I'll it. watch it. Like Gotham. No. Like Gotham. Oh, like, damn it. Right. Like Gotham. Like you you finally were like, yo, you need to watch this then. I'm like, okay. All right, I'll finally watch some of it. I'm like, okay, this is really good except for the last episode. Sorry, I wasn't on the air when uh, we probably talked about that, but yeah. No, the only episode, episode. You, only episode of the Arrow you need to watch this season is a crossover episode. The rest have been horrible. We already did that, didn't we? That's I think I think that's what yeah, we said. They haven't the had crisis any. one. That's what that was it, right? The mm-hmm. almost crisis one. Yeah. yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's that's pretty much almost that's pretty much where I stopped watching all of them. Try to. Yeah, watch what the thing girls. is, mm. they, is they're very exhausting because they do the same thing in all the shows. Like the main character. Yeah around about like 40 supporting cast members and then like 80 (laughs) percent of them have to become superheroes and then we have to start caring about their superhero power drama i don't know if i want this anymore do i want to stay in this life who made me do this and the hero just kind of gets pushed to the back burner maybe they have a subplot maybe they don't and in flash's case hey here's my new sidekick of the year we're going to focus on them really hard on Arrow, it's, hey, how can we find a way to get more time for Felicity? Oh, and, also remember sidekick but, romances. All the sidekick well, romances. I mean, well, you know, that was season one where he's like slept with everybody he trained. And he trained everyone. <laughs> it's just like, what can do? Are we talking about Oliver or Barry? Oliver, season one. Arrow. Remember it was like the you mean when they got rid of all the black people in Arrow beside John? Yes, but wasn't that season one? That was season one. Yeah, that's true. That was. Um, I'm talking about like you know Huntress, and I'm like, didn't he? And he trained some other chick. I'm like, dude, how many people are you gonna train, dude? That was like probably the only flaw of season one. Yeah, like, no, they brought back her back. Uh, Jiggle scheming on his sister-in-law. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 Jeff. Remember, it's okay. It as long as it's not my mom that you're sleeping with, and you slept at, but my brother's <laughs> wife. Blast house there. Also, okay if the writers forgot about anything that happened besides before season four. Yeah, or before Felicity was the woman. Before Felicity oh, was the man. Everything. Yeah. And, and sorry, man, daughters, Becky Lynch. But... Felicity is the man. Yeah, so she's that, supposed to be off the show soon. But no, Flash, yeah, dude. I get when uh, they, some more episodes? Like, huh? Felicity's gone oh. after this season, which I think is down oh, to two God. more episodes. Yeah. Thank goodness. Peace. No, going back to Flash, yeah. though, like, going back to Flash, what you said, mentioned, what you mentioned about, like, everybody has to be a superhero and find their powers. See, that made sense with Flash because they've been teasing about these people for a while, like Cisco, right? You know, he's supposed to be Vibe. So, you know, Caitlin Snow, I mean, hello. You know what I mean? It's just like, when is she turning back? So I, I like when they were doing that with Flash because that made sense. These names came you from. You say that. You say that, but <laughs> the you way haven't they did watched it was terrible. the second half of the season, which oh, is all about no. Caitlyn. It's, it's not all about Caitlyn. Who cares it's just... about Caitlyn? Like, seriously, she should be a villain. Like, Caitlyn should be locked away in Arkham. Like, seriously. Caitlyn should be locked away in Arkham. Like, seriously. Caitlyn Like, seriously. She should be a villain locked away in Arkham like everybody else. I don't understand I do. this. It's, it's all about... It's Caitlyn is probably a 40% of every Flash episode. Then we have, like, 50% of Nora, and then Barry gets that ten percent to do whatever he needs to do, and sometimes it's not even showing up in the episode. I was gonna say, they actually remember there was an actual episode this season. He literally wasn't there. I mean, they they throw him for like five minutes at most, and then it was all Nora episodes. Like you guys have to. It's like whenever they. I mean, like, and, and I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna take a small piece of Black Lightning. They need to figure out how to utilize the stars of these shows. For exactly. Elite, it's like, hey, come up with whatever you're doing. Make it so 
this you have a season long arc of whatever the hell you're doing and make sure the main character is the focus. You can have sidekicks supporting, not being focused. Like it's just it's gone off the wires lately on these shows. Well the arrow the entire arrowverse is that's just how they roll because it's they rush. And I know what you always say, like, oh I'm excited because they're teasing. But the problem is they don't know how to to put the toothpaste back in the, the thing once they let it out. It's, oh, shoot, right. we've got Caitlin, and she's got powers. We've got to put her in every episode to make her worthwhile to be hanging out with Flash. And it doesn't matter if Flash gets knocked out because he's not fast enough to see somebody. Caitlin can stop him with her snow blast. That's not an effective use of these supporting characters. And it's also worse than Flash because they already had a really important role as his support tech staff. And now it's like nobody's there besides Sherlock. Iris. Or Ralph. Or Iris. Iris. And, but it's like, you know, that now they don't the know what to do with any of those characters. Episodes. Yeah, they've got like 20 people and they don't need that many. And, and Cisco like, seems like he's going to be gone off. at the end of this year. So it, Is he really? Just, yeah, it seems like it. I mean, he's really missed episodes. And they go, uh, Cisco's investigating such and such. Oh my gosh. So, see, this is. Okay. okay. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Flash is, 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 even though we're talking about Flash, <clears throat> Flash has been okay. Like, Supergirl has probably fared the best since the break, but Flash is up there. But it is, though, what we're talking about are flaws with the shows. I mean, it's just. You notice it. Yeah. I mean, you're going to notice it when you binge watch them. Like, where the hell is Flash in this? Like, I mean, that's when you catch it. But it's like, okay, the storyline's going okay. Like, Supergirl probably has the best storyline of the series. I mean, of the Arrowverse, but Flash is the second. Arrow is like fifth, and there's only like five shows. And, and <laughs> there's like there's a blank three and four. The rest of them are all five yeah. and whatever. They are. All right, so. Here's a question I had for everybody here because back to the Game of Thrones thing, people are complaining, oh man, they're just killing off all the POCs and it's terrible the way they treat the women on this show and the one black couple can't be happy. When you watch TV shows, when you watch Nobody's movies, happy though. Do you, if they are, they're, they're never happy. This is I mean, Game of Thrones, no happy. one's happy. Exactly. Cersei's doing this because she's not happy. Right. This is the whole point. Did they not watch all the... That Other dude, seven yeah, seasons? No. Yeah. So, <laughs> but my question no, for y'all is, when you watch a show and you decide, and eh, I'll stick with it, I won't stick with it, how much a factor does representation matter to you? Like, hey, they've got to have the black dudes being cool. The black dude needs to be X, Y, Z. The black women need to be this. Hey, y'all need to have more representation or I'm out. Like, there's shows on CBS. I'm like, yeah, sorry. No watch it because there's not anybody that looks like me. I know back in the day I used to watch NBC shows. I'm going to say them in particular because they were pretty much the main network I watched mm-hmm. growing up. There weren't a lot of black people, if at all. They didn't even have the token on a lot of shows that I watched, like Cheers and Friends and Wings. Airwolf. Black person Airwolf was just all white. not available. <laughs> I mean, I and, the, but, but no, no, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So my point is, I watch those shows, and I was like, hey, these are good. I like them. But now I'm like, eh, y'all, it's 2019. I need y'all to do better because there's a million networks and millions of shows now that I can watch that cater more to what I want to see. I mean, Netflix does that all the time. It's like, oh, cool. Mm-hmm. We've got a show with black people. I'm going to watch mm-hmm. you. I won't do that now with a CBS show, with an ABC show, with a Fox show, NBC, et cetera, if they can't be bothered to represent us. So, Javon, what is your take on these shows now? And do they need to represent you for you to be watching shows or movies? You know, Jeff, you you touched on something. You know, we're, we're guys of a certain age now. We came up on not just the programs of our eras, but the programs of our grandparents and parents' Javon, you just did exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. Right, Donna? Please help me. Please help me, you know, as I go through this. Um, we grew up on shows where what? there was If there was a black person, 
they had a five second speaking role. They they said a sentence and they walked off. I never remember Hold on, a black. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, sir. You know, we 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 grew up on those shows, and even as we came into our we you know black shows or shows that told or shows from the black point of view didn't really come into play until what the seventies, the early seventies. We talking about good times. That's my mama, you know, uh, Sanford, Jefferson, you know, yeah. yeah, the Jeffersons, all that, right? Um, we came up on shows where the only people who were represented historically on television were white people. There were white shows. You ever remember a black face in Mayberry anywhere in North Carolina? There was no, there was no black mm-hmm. person in Mayberry, right? We we watched Rifle these shows. Man. All yeah, these Rifleman, yeah. anything, Gunsmoke. Yeah, the Big Valley, any of it. We watched these shows. We came up on these shows. There was no representation. There were white people on the shows. And a lot of the movies that we watched, oh, they, that they, you know, for those of us who came up and watched these movies from the 50s, 60s, even into the 70s, the minorities, some of the minorities, if they weren't straight up black, were played by other white people. You know, that doesn't make it okay. But I think from our perspective, we're not as in tune. Maybe I'm not as in tune to that. I don't want to see that today. It's not okay today, but I'm not beating the drum if I don't see a black face. I'll make a comment, and here's the thing about it. I'm never one for tokenism, so I don't want to see a black face or an Asian face or Latino face, especially if, if, if we're just tokens, if, if we're just tokens and also that we're just stereotypes. Because yes. there's nothing worse than that. Like I like the Sopranos, but I'm gonna tell you something, and I wouldn't expect the Sopranos to 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 uh, uh, portray blacks in a, a very positive light, because it's a show about the Italian American experience, you know, the Guido experience of Joy of uh, Joyzy. And Javon, right? you mentioned that that was a show that people raved about for years. Mm-hmm. I watched the first season, was like, ah, eh, I'm good, man. I, I need mm-hmm. this, to and I understood. It was like, you know. This show's not for me. I'm not mm-hmm. expecting to see a ton of black people in there, but I'm like, eh, there's other shows I can watch. I don't need to exactly. watch Exactly. So it's like, okay, move on. Yeah, and, and that's it. And that's it, Jeff. He's like you said, it's moving on. Um, like people love the Sopranos. I like the Sopranos. I liked it a lot. It was a really good show. Um, but blacks were portrayed terribly on that show. We were cartoon characters for what it's worth on that show. Black people were portrayed as cartoon characters on that show. And albeit, you know, it's a show that glamorized mafia living, they still didn't paint them in the best picture either. You know, they didn't paint right. <laughs> their heroes in the best of picture either. If you're really watching the show, these people were terrible people all the way around. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get too hung up on it. I will comment on it. Um, I just, I understand that, you know, they we're not always going to be portrayed in the best light as minorities, and, and especially if we're not the ones telling the story. We're not the ones conveying the story to the audience. Oftentimes, the black portrayal is written by somebody who isn't black at all. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to tell? How are you going to show me a black man as a, as as a non-black man or a black woman? How are you going to write from a black person's perspective when you ain't black at all? A lot of times it's just what you think black people are, what, what you've seen or, or, or that misrepresentation. And you know what? For what it's worth, I, it doesn't bother me because I know that's not who I am. That's not most of the brothers and sisters that I know. That's not who we are. It's television. I, I, I leave it there. I'll comment on it. You know, I, I think it's corny. I think it's funny. But I, you ain't going to trigger me with that. I, we've been dealing with that all our lives as far as I'm concerned. So, Chief, oh, I'll what be triggered. Say? Hold oh, up. sorry. Steve, what's, what's your take, man? Uh, I, I, I mean, I agree with Javon uh, mostly because uh, I don't necessarily notice it until there's a token black guy. Then it's just, it's, it's almost like, like, you know, like a fireworks going off on the screen. Ooh, look, token, here he is. Um, because if I'm watching a show that Whites are hanging with whites. I'm just watching the show that whites are hanging with whites. Like, um, if I'm watching a show with, you know, I mean, I might watch a show where, where, where blacks are hanging with blacks. Like, it just, you know, it all depends on what show 
what I'm what I'm watching, what show it is. Um so I I I don't I don't think I, I that I don't know, for me that never really got to me. I mean, I I just it never really became a thought. You know what I mean? Um I think for the most part a good show is a good show, whether it's it's white or black, like um I can go to a movie and watch a, 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 a all white cast. Um, not playing Egyptians or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Um and and watch the movie and be fine with it. Um I can you know, Tombstone uh, just from just off the top of my head was one of my favorite movies ever. Um, as far as Westerns go anyways. And just off the off the top of my head, I can't remember a black person in it, but it didn't make the movie bad. Um, it just, it just, I guess you know, it just, I guess it all depends on the person too. Um, so you know, uh, I guess it's all on 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 how you view it. But I mean, like. We've come to that point where there's there's black movies out, you know. Um, so it's not just like last well early this morning I got up to go to work and uh, Foxy Brown was playing, and uh, you know I was watching and I was like, you know, you can see how it was in the seventies for us, but you know. Uh, R.I.P. to Singleton. I mean, there's there's there's, there's, there's Spike still out there. There's, there's we've got black filmmakers who portray blacks in films now. I don't I don't as a black person, I don't think we need to cry over everything that happened. In a sense, you know what I mean. I mean. You got some black people that cry foul on everything. Oh, there's not enough this. There's not enough that. We just yeah, we're not. Oh. But if you want to look, I mean, if you take time to actually look, like even I was just scrolling through my um my Prime video, and I was looking at uh the the black movies that's just out there on on just you know what I mean. Um, hell, the new movie uh, uh, with Megan Good and my man um, Michael intruder. something. Michael Ealy. But right, but the two main characters, even though what's the name is in it, even the two main characters are black. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's so there's black people being represented in movies, Hollywood movies. I mean, Girls Trip was was black, uh, which is every time I watch that, I'm I'm doubled over in stitches. Um, What's the other movie that came out? Um, it was Girls Trip. It was a uh, hell. Beyonce's been in a few black movies. Her and uh, what's her name? Uh, so like, if you just take the time to sit down, there's, there's we have black representation in movies. So not if there's a white movie, I don't need to yell, "Where's the black guy?" And you know, I mean, hell, you could. There's places where I work at my, at my job where you could probably go and not see a whole lot of black people. You, you know what I mean? It, it might be somewhere where we're not. It's just, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, shoot, you you go through parts of D.C. now, you may not see a black person. <laughs> they may not be out. So it is, it is what it is. Maybe this place takes place in a white neighborhood. You just don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just not that complainer. I'm not that complainer unless it's just something that's just blatant. Like I said, uh, there was that movie with the kings, the, the the gods of Egypt or something like that, and it was all white cast. That I complain about. I'm like, yo, well, if you're going to do a film on Egypt or Egyptians or certain, you know what I mean, and you got an all white cast, that that to me is crazy. So I mean, Gunner. something that that you know that that blatant. Yeah. All right. So Gunner, so I was I was telling the fellas, there are a lot of people complaining about Miss Andy and Greg Worm not getting their happy ending, and saying 
you know, her being in handcuffs and getting beheaded would never have happened if there were POCs in the writer's room. And why is there no woman writing for this show anyway? And I'm done with Game of Thrones. Ever, it's a fantasy novel. Like, what? Uh, I'll get there. Hold on. I'll get there. I'll Go ahead. There. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. I'll get there. Um, going back to the original question, is it going to, is, you know, we'll get this gun thrown in one, yeah, this won't take long. Um, I just want to go back to your original question. And, uh, I mean, like Javon started and, 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 and Chief concurred, like, I'm there too. I'm like, we're dudes of a certain age where we grew up watching Dukes of Hazard, whether we want to admit it or not. I don't care. Ouch. We watched this damn car with a Confederate flag on it, knowing damn well what it meant most of the time. Um, maybe not early on, but then as I grew up, I was like, oh, this is not a good, okay, whatever. Um, thank my parents for that one, I guess. Um, on both sides of the spectrum, because my dad watched it with me, and then he was like, wait a minute, we shouldn't be watching. Um, so, I mean, we've grown up looking at things, and I'm like, I don't believe black people were in Dukes of Hazard, and if they were, they were probably lynched. I don't know. Um, so, we probably have a skewed perspective. I mean, I think it's a general generational thing. Where, you know, I think, you know, if I grew up in the, well, I'll say in the 2000s, I'll be like, yo, we don't need to do this anymore. I'll probably be more in an uproar about the Sandy and a few other people, but, or a few other things. But I will call out things that have certain themes that we shouldn't have to have anymore because I did grow up in the, you know, in the 80s and 90s where we had, you know, that up wave of Black Power, Black Cinema, Malcolm X came out, you know, and all the Spike Lee movies, Boomerang, et cetera. So, We've seen this in TV, and then now we're back on an upswing after this Tyler Perry dis- debacle of, what, 10 years? <laughs> now we're back on an upswing of real quality Black movie, Black cinema, Black um, um, streaming stuff, Black um, television shows. You know, I mean, shout out to Shonda Rhimes. I mean, it's trashy, so proper TV, but so was Dynasty, so was Falcon Crest, so was, you know what I mean? So people that we still watch all those white things um, when in the 80s. So, but going to real quick. Like my only problem with Shonda Rhimes is the black woman in her stories always have to play white man's conquest. Yeah, and you know what? I go back to that every now and then with the whole Ang Lee thing. I think every movie that Ang Lee has, he has father mm-hmm. issues because mm-hmm. every main character has father issues. Has a father issue. I think issue. she has some issues there, too. You see what I'm saying? Coming yeah, in it manifests life. in her writing. Yeah. Bingo. So I'm not going to cry too much about that, but yeah, that's something I did. I've called out. And going back to what we're talking about here, I call things out doesn't mean I'm not going to watch the show unless it's really starting to get bad, like how I, how how to get away with murder really kind of got annoying and bad. Um, but not in that same way, but, you know, I did call out like, hey, man, how come he's always with the white dude? Or how come the Sandy's in handcuffs? I mean, she's going to die because Cersei got her. That's it. It's Game of Thrones. Everybody dies. They killed off freaking Ned in the first episode. What are you going to do? Like, after that, you should probably understand that people are going to die. For her to die, I mean, she was one of two black folks on the whole show. And at this point, I mean, at this point of Game of Thrones, I expect everybody to die, including her. So, but yeah, the change thing, I noticed it. I'm going to call it out, but it's not going to make me stop watching the show to completely answer your question, Um, um, Jeff. But, you know, in other episodes, like, let's say we we talked about The Sopranos. I don't expect to see Black people in a positive light in an Italian drama. Has anybody watched The Godfather? Give it to the niggas. Yo, that's literally what they were saying. Put the drugs and then the Black people. You know what I mean? Like, if you watch The Godfather, you're like, oh, exactly. that's what it is. If you didn't, if you don't know mm-hmm. any Italian-American that really doesn't like Black people then in real life, <laughs> then you should watch The Godfather and find out what they think about us. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, there. Look, I've learned how to say nigger in so many different languages around the world by just dating different types of women. That that you just you cut. It's kind of commonplace that you know if you're gonna have a a drama where where the the the, the main characters in the whole entire series for what six and a half seasons, um, was, it was all Italian Americans. Guess what's gonna happen, right? You know what I mean? I mean, we're not gonna be in a good light, but I'm still gonna watch the show because I'm a fan of those type of shows call me an American, sorry. But yeah, you know what I mean? So we do have that double consciousness of like, yo, this is still a show I'm going to watch. But I do see these themes and I do want to call them out. And please, Lord, I will always call out the tokenism. When when it's forced, 
it's just obvious. I mean, there are shows that, I mean, there are shows that have done it right where the main character is white, but then there's black characters, but they're a good supporting cast and they're awesome. Scrubs, <laughs> I'll throw out there, right? You know what I mean? Um, I'm thinking of, oh, I just had another one um, that was a while, that, that just got canceled a while ago. But they, you know, they not that long ago, but they were, they were it was good. Oh, um, um, Amy Poehler, what the, uh, Parks and Rec. I mean, they weren't tokens. <laughs> you know what I mean? They they were main staples in that show that was a great supporting cast of the white characters. And it doesn't have to be like they are the star, star, stars. I understand that they're not going to be that, right? So I don't know, man. Like, you, gonna, you ain't going to tell me there's more than four black people in, 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 in Pawnee, Indiana anyway. Sorry. So, you know what I mean? And then you got those, those, those shows where they do the time travel and the black dudes just talking to the slave dude in the same language. One, two, you know, talk, you know, just being out here. I'm, I'm just black. I'm here. I'm cool. I'm chilling in the cafe and no one's talking to me while I'm talking to this white girl. That's called tokenism. I don't like that. Cause that's just like, not even realistic. Like, I'm just like, that's when it's forced to me. You know what I mean? Legends tomorrow, timeless, get out of my face. Um, and then there was like, you know, then there's, then you got Green Book. I mean, <laughs> we've talked about it enough on this show, but we got Green Book too. So there are things that need to be called out that are like, these are old themes that don't need to happen. And depending on how good the show is, I'll probably ignore it. Um, and the whole chain thing, that was a nice subtle like, hey, hey, by the way, let's put her back in the chains. But given the storyline of old girl breaker of chains, you know what I mean? Is the baker of chains and then here's her best friend back in chains. That's Cersei, like, screw you. I'm putting her back in chains. This is what's going to happen. I mean, that's, that's the character. <laughs> like, I, I can't get that mad at it because I understand it. But it's a theme that's like a, I wouldn't call it a trigger because then I'd be going off like, oh, pissed off. But it's like a, it's a twinge where it's like, I noticed this crap because, you know, I'm a descendant of slaves in this country. I'm going to see that. I'm going to call it out. Is it going to make me watch, not watch the show? No. That's it. It's a generational thing, dude. All right, Chase. What you got? Okay. Which which question do you want me to answer? Whichever one you want to, bro. Go nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But what the, uh I think the I don't I mean, like because it's, it's like anybody who ever watched. I mean, like probably's over my house. Like I end up watching like I'm more likely to watch shows that don't have. Like it, it had almost no representation versus like like kind of uh, J- Javon and Chief says like I don't want to tell it's like don't give me tokenism like don't put the random black guy in there a random black girl in there and just kind of uh, like you said like almost like a stunt casting like I, I, I never like that like I'm I'm I will watch Friends to this day they probably had maybe ten black people in the whole series I, I didn't care it was funny like and. Uh, I watch Game of Thrones. I watch fantasy stuff. Like I watch Lord of the Rings. Like there's not that in this, some of these movies. There's just not that many black people. It's like Lord. It was like did, if you really thought the one black couple was gonna have a happy ending, and Game of Thrones, you're an idiot. Like I mean, you you didn't see the fact that Rob and his whole family got slaughtered at the wedding. Like, <laughs> so you you you're just like you're oblivious to everything. So, but. If just don't, I mean, and also, and I know the new now, the new thing is basically also don't like, hey, if you're gonna have a random black dude, don't put the random black guys gay, don't look, put the random minorities gay or something like that. Like, hey, we're doubling up on our minorities so everybody's representative. Like, kind of the CW, hey, we're we represent diversity. It's like, like have you can have shows without us in there. Like, kind of like I said, we don't have to be everywhere. We have some very good representation like but i mean maybe he has some asian people in here i think they would actually prefer to be represented like and other than your i mean actually have two asian people in there before you go right to anybody else or two latinos i mean like before you talk about can you have you know, the asian people not be asexual like that would be great oh man you know the funny thing is like oh, i was last year, cause i was watching scrubs last night <laughs> And it's like it's like a med school one, and the dude's like the, the one Asian guy there is smart, and he's basically brushing. He's like he's like so cool. He's got like this this really attractive girl. Just he's just like babe, you're smother. It's like I'm like thank you. Like why is that not a thing? Like I mean, it's just like it's, 
I mean, he's like, stop trying to make us asexual to make it unthreatening for everybody else. It's like, yeah, there's that. Like, that's, that's annoying as hell to me. Either that, or if you're Latino, or or if you're you're Asian American, Indian American, whatever, you have to speak with the exaggerated accent. Yeah. What I do mean, you like, mean? Like, what do they call it? Like, yeah, they call that's, it the, that's the tokenism. Yeah. Like that's yeah, that's yeah, what exactly. I mean. It's like if you say, "Oh, these people," like nobody's in there writing. It's like, I mean, if you really want to shoot, like Arrow has a whole crap load of black people in there, but there's also you you could tell it's like some of the stuff is just like who's in there writing. Yeah, I mean, it's just like there's there's like uh, and nobody gonna call Felicity out. Just she's just carte blanche. All right. Okay. Like, I mean, that's the stuff that more so gets me now than just having us in there. If you can have, if you can tell there's somebody in the background, like kind of checking their, I mean, like writers' worst impulses or worst their stereotypes they might have watched on MTV or oh. something like that when they were coming up. Like, oh, hold on. All right. So speaking of, right, I watched this movie, Long Shot, uh, the Seth Rogen, Charlize Theron film. Yeah, uh, Smucky Seth Rogen somehow manages to woo Charlize Theron, who he, he played his babysitter back in the day. And it's every Seth Rogen uh, character fantasy come to life. Uh, his his best friend is played by uh, Ice Cube Jr. I don't remember his real name, so apologies. But um, yeah, O'Shea Jackson. Thank you. I, I'm sorry. It's just, it, it skipped my mind for a minute. I was I was going with Ren and Eric Wright and could not think of O'Shea. <laughs> I was hanging with your girl O'Shea. Anyhow, um, so at the near the end of the movie, they uh, you know, they have a it's a romantic comedy. I'm not spoiling a second of this movie. They end up getting back together, and uh, Ice Cube Junior goes Wakanda forever. I'm like, I know, no black dude, no black woman uh. was in the writers' room. Do we need that? That's just that joke, dude. It was like random as ever. I actually took a point from my review just for that line, dude. That's and the, you know what's sad one of about those that? Ten things I hate about you things, or what was that other one? What? The one with Freddie Prince Jr. I so, think they, they just had the random that? black dudes just oh the, the dancing scene. Well, wait a second, uh, do that dance I told that? y'all. Come on, that was high school. Do that dance I told y'all. Did that in high school, right? Hey man, there, no. there was at least like five black people in she's Yeah, she's man. Got, they, and they talked. Yeah. They talked. <laughs> Little kid was in it, okay? Five, there were a whopper five black people in that high school. Hey, if you, if hey. it was an Oregon high diversity. school, there was five black people. I'd say that's good representation. Hey, that's but diversity. Listen, what yeah, a, what a, a point. was little boy from Psych, right? He was in there. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. yeah dude, Gabriel, you yeah. yeah. Little Kim. I mean, we had three uh, I thought Gabriel was in uh, uh, she was she was in that too. She was in that too. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean that movie had a pretty high quota for a '90s rom com, teen rom com. Can't hardly wait. Yeah. Hey, we were getting light then, man. We had to, you had to throw somebody in there. That's what Usher was doing movies. Right. But, but doing just, movies, it, it, quote. Say, like them. That's that's one of them joints. I understand you're O'Shea Jackson. And you're trying to build up your resume. Mm-hmm. But that's when you you say, Seth, I know you wrote that stupid ass joke. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like Jay's you, right there. Gotta, and that's a Seth Rogen joke. Ha <laughs> see, you should say, it was, well, kind of forever, that'd be funny. Like, no, I'm not doing that. And if you, <laughs> that's one of them times, like, hey, if you're going to fire me for that, I'm okay with it. Because I will literally blast this movie for you trying to throw that little token line in there. Well, see, like, Jay's right there. You just said it. I'm O'Shea Jackson's son. I'm Ice Cube's son. No way in hell. No yeah. way. I mean, it's like, you know who my father is? <laughs> I mean, it's like you, you're trying to say, hey, I'm I'm trying to make my name for myself as an actor, but I'm not, I'm, if I'm ever going to be, I mean, I'm not saying I need to be taken serious as an actor. I might be in some comedies later on in my life, but I'm like, no, I, I understand where you're going for this, but this is the token joke, and I'm not going to play part of it. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot better dialogue for you to come up with in this scene. Anything else. Anything else. All right, fellas, we're almost down with, done and wrapped up with this episode, but we have not done this in a second, so I know there's some dummies. Let's hear your dummies of the week. Uh, let's start off with Jason. Dang. I, I, I was tossing this around with uh, 
a couple of boys earlier today. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, dang it! No, no, no! You know, you're you're going to take the other side on this one. That's the funny thing. Am I? I think you might. Why don't you share with the rest of the class? Okay, as, as I say, like for some reason, somebody, a, a basketball wife, decided to get overly sherry. Uh, with uh, Jada Pinkett. And the one we're talking about today is uh, <clears throat> Ms. Uh, Aisha Curry. Aisha Curry said that uh, she, she, she's seen a little couple of those groupies, uh, you know, give those nice looks to Steph. And she, she wants to feel a little appreciated. She, she, she'd like to have a groupie or two. I'm actually going to say my dummy of the week is Steph Curry. Because Steph Curry just got a bajuku bazillion dollar contracts. You do not want your wife to feel unappreciated if you live in California. So you do whatever it takes within the boundaries of your own marriage to make her feel very appreciated in the groupies or whatever. However you need to do to make it look like the groupies do not exist, you need to make her feel like she is a princess, or yeah. some dude will do it and wreck your marriage, and she will still take half your money because you yeah. probably y'all were kids I when y'all like met, and she's going to take half if you if no matter who <laughs> screws up. So you need to make her feel awesome. So my you know what, OJ's? Hmm. What you got? I, I I miss when we didn't know who the players' wives were. I really do. I do miss these days. Mm. I do too, Grandpa. Wow. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Wow. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Don't mess with my trash cans. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Please let me go next because holy crap. Go ahead. Go ahead. Watch <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Jason was correct. Uh, yeah. I'm, I was, my dummy of the week is actually Aisha Curry. Here's why. So, okay, you don't feel appreciated, that's cool, whatever. To, con- to, to Contrary to what our unmarried friend Jason just said, there's <laughs> nothing you can do to make your wife appreciated, feel appreciated, even if you are making your wife appreciated. That is the grandest truth of any man who's ever been or still is married. <laughs> the end. Amen. <laughs> there are always be something this is her something <laughs> you get what i mean and keep in mind i've always what been a fan of her. i'm like dude she's like quality she's cool all right what up? here's her something there's always something right like there's literally always something so even if you fix that something there's going to be something else that's what marriage is that's how it works i'm what sure women will say the same thing about for me lately yeah that's what it is that's it end of story you know what I mean? So I'm going to say she's a dummy to week because now she's going to have to close down her DMs because there's going to be dudes from miles around be like, what? Really? Because I can dig it. Or <laughs> as I passed on to the same group of dudes, there could be messages like, <laughs> I'm just going to paraphrase here, nobody's going to treat you how your husband is going to treat you because <laughs> your hips <laughs> your face are big mad or or mad big and you know what i mean it's all <laughs> kinds of stuff. i'm not a, i'm not condoning this it's kind of rude but i mean you did put yourself out there as a famous person so you're gonna catch some hell um but again i'm not you know i wouldn't do this this is kind of rude and now you're gonna talk about like hey i'm not getting appreciated i'm like well you're not 20 some i get what the point of the insults are because i'm like you're not 20 something you're not this You've decided to be married in this relationship. You decided to do live your life this way. You decided to maybe skip the cardio that day. You may you decided to eat the ho ho, and now oh, what you're wow, going okay. to get? Dang. I mean, come on, let's be clear. I mean, if I decided to eat belt. I got a pot belly. If <laughs> I decided to eat McDonald's, I got a pot belly. I'm not. I'm not. I don't really have a right to say how come women aren't attracted to. Like you know what I mean? I eat, I eat, I, I go to I go to Hopper House and eat like a stein and drink like a stein of three steins of freaking beer and end up like fat sore. Like what do you want me to do? Oh, women don't like me because I'm fat. Yes, 
<laughs> like, uh, I'm sorry, that's just how it is. Like, so why am I supposed to? I'm gonna walk on eggshells for her too? No, I don't care what area we live in. That's the truth. Of life. Grow up. So she needs to grow up. She's the dummy of the week. Deal with your husband. Those are issues between you and your husband. I know Jada's got the cool magic of bringing all this stuff out. You're famous. This is the kind of crap you're gonna get. Have a nice life. Hey, by the way, why does that Jada look like Elder Boss now? Yeah, yeah. Put a put a Jerry Curl wig on it. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Make the dream sound, Ryan. Sorry. All right, but, Chief. What you got? Brown, that joint, that that little joint. I thought I was the only one that noticed her face was big. I was thinking to myself, I'm no. like, what does she look like? And I kept a thinking, sweet potato. Is, she's got a tin like quagmire, right? <laughs> That's a quagmire tin. <laughs> That is the finest sweet you know potato I mean? I've ever Excuse seen. That is hilarious. That's so, a Tisha Campbell head, though. Every time I That's see that, I, yeah, I'm just like, okay, okay. A little crack myself, man. All right, well, it is what it is. Jeff, I, I have I mean, in dummy, my single days, I, I mean, come on. In my single days, I wouldn't have been that picky, but, you know, you're going to call yourself out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't even know why you want dudes to slide in there. Right. You know? You you know, I, I it is what it is, man. Um Steve, what you got, man? I, I you know, I, I don't I don't even remember my dummy at this point, Chief. I just I'm uh I'm just gonna listen to y'all dummies and, and, and enjoy the good dummies who who've uh gotten a response from you guys this week. Good deal. And I have my I'll have my dummy set up for next week. There we go. All right, Jay King, what you got, man? Dad, we we got a couple in the D.C. area right now. Um, I'm I'm, I'm gonna give you three. One are are unmelanateds who are walking their dogs on the yard at H.U. and with the arrogance to be like, well, it's it's grass, it's a patch of grass. If you only knew what this yard represents and, you know, if I went to, I don't know, you may have went to Tufts or University of Tennessee, Knoxville or Tulane, wherever you stupid kids went. um, And I walked my dog on, or or like, let's say, for example, you went to Auburn and I took my dog and my dog urinated on, what is that, the, uh, the famous tree there at Auburn University. Would you have the same devil may care attitude about it? No, you probably wouldn't. So yeah, they they they're part one. You know, they these these folks come to D.C. and just look. I, I'm not hung up on the whole Chocolate City thing because all things come to an end, and obviously Chocolate City ain't Chocolate City no more. But that's one place. That's one piece of hollow ground. It's not just because it's, a, it, it's not just because it's a HBCU. It's because this is a college campus. Show some damn respect. Show some damn respect. Um, two, my man's that thought they was gonna uh, hit a million dollars by stealing pickup trucks and driving them in the Seven Elevens to knock <laughs> loose the ATM machines. Y'all were the dumbest asses, and y'all are now the dumbest asses in captivity. Before you were the dumbest asses trying to make a million dollars knocking off ATM machines at a Sammy Lab. How much money did I think y'all was going to get? Really? How much money? How much money were y'all going to get? Um, now each of them got a nice and warm jumpsuit, and um, they won't be doing anything for a while. <clears throat> uh, number three. That's a toss up right now between more of our unmelanated friends who are uh trying to put a dampener on go go in, 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 in on uh Florida Avenue or, or Georgia and Florida at the what's the name right there. I mean, I dig it. It's loud, it's always been loud, but you didn't go you, when you moved into this neighborhood, you didn't take stock of the neighborhood? Like, this is where you're gonna live. I mean, I look, I for one am all about like, you know, residential change. We beautify things for our, our communities, our neighborhoods, our neighbors, et cetera. But this is one of those things when you move into a city, 
this is what you can expect. These are the vi- this is the vibe of the city that you came here for. What happens when you get overly involved in trying to change things? The vibe that you want, that you came here and was drawn to, you make it lame because it looks a lot like you now. It's really plain. It's really boring, and now you don't want to live here anymore. And that's what you're going to do. It's it's going to happen. It's a cycle. It all repeats itself. Um, that's my three. Um, even that in the fourth, Disney, Disney for announcing we're going to make three more terrible Star Wars movies because nobody needs them. Thank you. Thank y'all. Appreciate you. <laughs> My dummy of the week is very simple. The people who are posting, hey, Game of Thrones had a Starbucks cup on Tuesday. As if it was breaking news. Because I was like, mm-hmm. um, welcome to Monday, all of you. So, yeah, those are my choices. For my choice. Hey, can I my piggyback mind. off your choice? Because I agree also. This is a ridiculousness. We have a friend that uh, posted something funny on Facebook. It's like, are you are you more mad about Miss and the, the, the Miss and the and the dragon that died, or Starbuck and the fact that Wolf is kind of you know just on his own again? I want to see something. And I'm like, yep, I know exactly what he's trying to say there. And it's kind of hilarious. And I think his experiment is correct because I've only seen the non-melanin really, really upset about Starbucks and the dog. (laughs) That's it. It's it's hilarious. Yes. All right, fellas. Well, we wrapped up another episode. Thank y'all out there for listening. Thank y'all, as always, for being with me on this. This episode allows movie files. Has been filed.